All right, today's problem, the power just went out or certainly will. What do I do? Well, we have the five solutions if your power's out now and five preventions to make this not a problem. This is Beers TV Problem Solvers. If reliance on a continuous stream of power is your problem and it's everyone's problem, well, this video is the solution starting with number one. Step number one is embrace the inevitable, the power will go out. And it's not just you know power in your local area, you gotta think about that, but what happens when uh, it's localized? So maybe the power goes out, maybe your neighborhood uh, tree falls on the uh, wires, knocks the power out. But what if it happens in your own house, like a breaker box, uh, a breaker switch flips in the middle of the night, or you get to shorten your wire, or even one of your power strips or power bars fails, GFCI outlet flips inside your house, or uh, uh, the plug just came loose on the piece of equipment. Power outage can happen from globally to locally, and you have to be prepared for any of those. If I think about it in those types of terms, mm -hmm. the chances that my tank is going to experience or any piece of equipment on their experience of power outages is a near certainty. So embrace the inevitable and you'll be more successful. Number two is there's multiple solutions out there for power monitoring to let you know that this is actually happening. Oh yeah. So uh, most people know that with the Apex, there's like a heartbeat. So if you have an advanced controller, it's sending little beats out. Can I connect? Can I connect? Right. And if it can't, it'll start sending you alarms to your phone saying, come save your tank. It's out of power. Why is that important? Well, most of the time you're not home. <laughs> most of the time, uh, eight hours a day, you're 100%. at work. Yeah. Right, probably 10 hours of travel. Yep. Uh, another eight hours a day, I'm sleeping. Uh, so just a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours in the evening, am I actually around to even know the power went out? Well, there's, an, uh, there's an, another part of the apex that helps here too, because not always will your head unit go out. Maybe you have your energy bar plugged into a GFCI and that GFCI goes out, but your head unit and the rest of the apex is still running. So you, it's not telling you that the power is out because all of your home power is out, but that one energy bar is out. Meaning if you have power notifications or power usage alarms on some of your equipment set up, you'll know if one outlet in the energy bar, the energy bar itself also goes out when the rest of the power is still in the house. That goes all the way down to if the w one outlet, like what have like that loose you know, plug that we talked right about. Out. Yeah, yeah exactly. you'll know, you get an alarm. This thing should be taking that power and isn't. But beyond that, mm. there's options like uh, the CJ return pumps. Smart. The smart type of pumps and uh, equipment now for reefing not only tells you that it's failed and is hooked up to your Wi-Fi, but it will tell you it can't connect meaning likely the power's out because the router's out. So there's lots of options now to let you know. But the most important thing to know is I won't be home. I'll probably be sleeping, maybe on vacation. The chances that I know when the power went out in real time are near zero. So notifications, the most important part. Number three, whether you spent thousands or hundreds of dollars on your tank, your battery backup or your power outage solution should match your investment in the tank. I mean, I'm either gonna buy several thousand dollars worth of generator or maybe a little $20 Airstone will, will cover it for me. We're gonna cover those four solutions in just a bit, but having one on your tank to protect your investment that you put into the tank is going to be the path to success. The important part actually is to go get it now. So whatever mm. that option is, go pick it up now because it won't be there when you need it. Uh, so pick that investment and make it now. It will protect the tank. Number four, think about what goes into a power solution for your specific location, meaning what does winter and summer look like? Because you may actually need to run an air conditioner or furnace to actually oh, yeah. save the tank. And how long does the power outage usually happen? Are you in a metropolitan area where it's usually only 10 hours? Are you in an area that has constant brownouts and it might actually be three days while the power's out and it happens three times a year? Well, the solutions are different for you. So adjust the solution to match the environment and the frequency in which this happens. Number five might be the most important one you hear today, and that is every tank should have some sort of power head that has battery backup capabilities on it because this is the solve for 70 to 80% of the power outages out there, which is the gas exchange. Meaning if you have a power head that you've already bought that has a battery backup option, uh, absolutely that. go get it <laughs> because 
that thing will turn on the moment that you need it. You don't have to be around, doesn't matter if you're sleeping, doesn't matter if you're working. If you have an AC solution or you happen to have bought a solution that doesn't have a battery backup, you got two options. One, you can go out and get another power head that has an option like that. Mm -hmm. You can also get these uh, you know, computer battery backups, but uh, to get one that lasts even as much as uh, 10 hours, you're into a few hundred dollars, right? And the more typical ones in that 100 to 150 range will really only last four to six hours in most cases, and that's brand new. Meaning yeah. a couple of years from now, it's probably half that. So the DC options that don't have to convert AC to DC to AC back and forth, the DC options here are gonna last way longer. In fact, this one we tested to run up to 80 hours on an MP10. Oh, yeah. So it's just way, way more efficient. And even years down the road, probably way more than most people will need. All right, that cues up number six. There are priorities yeah. in terms of what you should actually care about during a power outage. And the reason we said that powerhead thing is because the most important, above all else, mm -hmm. by a magnitude of like 10x, is gas exchange. Meaning we're getting the oxygen in, we're getting the CO2 out, because once that gas exchange stops, all of a sudden everything starts dying. And it isn't like, uh, you know, all of a sudden we just have a long time once one thing goes, it all goes Ooh. and the tank just crashes. So it's gas exchange, the number one most important thing. Everything else a distant second, but what's number two? Yeah, number two is uh, you hear a lot of questions about, well, shoot, what about my heaters? You know, what, what about heating and cooling the tank? This is one of those uh, that you can actually last a longer time. So your tank is going to be fine, for, and it's a gradual fall to like 78 to 70, 70 degrees. Heating on the other end, uh, you know, you can solve this with some ice out of the freezer or what have you, you know, to help cool it down. But temperature, you know, if you're trying to solve it with a battery backup heater, Think about the wattage draw that that heater pulls versus the 300 watts versus the 10 watts of your power head. This is lower on the totem pole. Yeah, the nature of it is, A, even if you cared about it, it's much harder to solve because the energy to run a chiller or a heater is really high. Oh, yeah. uh, B, your tank can actually survive being cold for quite a while. Like by cold, I mean into the low 70s, you can often like go days, even weeks in some cases, in those lower degrees without wiping out the tank. Uh, so it is not as important. Heat, on the other hand, is going to become a problem, problem. because you're 110 degrees in your area, and now if, you're all, if your system's out, you're probably your air conditioner and furnace is out as well. So those are solutions that are, can only really be solved uh, through a generator or something like it. So if you know that you have that problem, generator may be a better solution for heating, but there's also what some people will back up is filtration. Yeah, so gas exchange temperature next in the priority list for is uh, filtration. Basically, this is just your return pump, powering your return pump to get your uh, water filtered through your skimmer, through your refugium. And, you know, in this case, with the, if you're only were concerned about filtering the water, I mean, if you were thinking about your skimmer, you'd have to power the skimmer as well. If you're thinking about the refugium, you also have to power the refugium light. And this one is just mechanical filtration at that point. Are you backing up your tank just to run the, your, your water through the filter sock? Which case, pretty, pretty low on the totem pole. And there are some DC, uh, pop, uh, there are some DC return pump options out there that do have battery backup options. They can run at like 50% of the intensity. But again, uh, if you have a power head in your tank causing the gas exchange, running your filtration, not much of a priority. You know, if you got an unlimited budget, you know, the Vectra uh, from Ecotech will plug into their battery backup solution and it'll even like, intelligently can set it up to run in a lower wattage to consume less power. Uh, but really a distant third right. uh, to the other ones and right up there with lighting. Uh, lighting, you know, there's storms on a natural reef all the time and really low light for maybe even as much as a week or yeah. two. So lighting really not an issue unless you have a really prolonged uh, outage. And I wouldn't consider that again, unless, I mean, you got an unlimited budget or huge, huge, huge investment in a tank. Generator is the solution for lighting. When you want the whole thing to run when it goes down, that's it. Number seven, we're moving on to the four solutions and in the order that we would implement them, starting with the battery backup being the number one solution. There's so many options out there for pumps these days that have an option for battery backup. More and more continually getting made by manufacturers. These are the DC options, the ones that can run 80 some hours because it's running on a DC to DC battery backup. This solves 90% of outages. It'll get you through 90% of your outages, which can 
can last, you know, anywhere from a few hours to maybe 24, 48 hours. Again, I'll go all the way to every single tank out there should have one power head, one battery backup solution at least. And the reason for that, again, is because it turns on automatically when the yeah. power goes out. Doesn't matter. Battery. I could be sleeping, it could be midnight, I'm already asleep, mm -hmm. power goes out, doesn't matter. I could be at, it could be at 9.30 a.m., power went out while I'm at work, doesn't matter, already kicked on. I don't really even need to worry about it. I don't need to rush home and go solve that problem or worry about what's gonna, when the power's gonna come back mm -hmm. on because I know my tank is being taken care of. It's a fairly affordable option to protect the tank, works without human interaction, and the best solution, that's why it's number one. Number eight, right after that, because it's cheap and it's easy, it's an inverter, meaning those things that you just pinch onto the battery of your car will send out 300 watts of power in many cases, and you can run a couple of things off of your tank by just leaving your car running. Yeah, this one is second on the totem pole because it is easy, it is cheap, but uh, second to a battery backup because I have to be there. I have to be there when the power goes out to run my car, to plug it in, to run the cord into my house and plug in my tank. But a uh, better option in a pinch and one of the, you know, like we said, one of the cheaper, more uh, savvier, uh, cost effective options, you know, if you uh, consider what we said earlier and in, in the investment in your tank, is this enough to uh, protect your investment? In fact, the next time that you're at Home Depot, you're, the next time you're yeah. at uh, Walmart or uh, Batteries Plus or anywhere, they all sell inverters. While you're there, just pick one up now because that is the solution to so many things. It's so easy. The big drawback again is the fact that it doesn't turn on. Otherwise, I'd probably make this number one. Yeah. It just doesn't turn on. You have to be there, run all those cords <laughs> and make it happen. But really inexpensive. If you're not gonna do anything at all, pick one of these things up while you're at one of those stores. Number nine solution is the battery air pump, the battery powered air pump. There are some that are designed to kick on when you're not there. And there's some that you just hang on the side of the tank when you are there and the power goes out. This is, you know, third and probably the bottom of the totem pole for the options here in that it's not like an air or it's not like a water pump or a power head where you're actually circulating the body of water and moving uh, the CO2 out and the oxygen in is very localized. It's right around the actual air bubbles themselves. And uh, you're not really mixing or churning the water. It is deceiving because it feels like, you know, oxygen's getting in there because look at all these bubbles. But again, not the best solution. One of the cheaper options but not the best or number one solution. The power head, turning over that whole surface of the water, mixing it, just a way, way, way better mm -hmm. option. Also, the uh, options that are automatic, meaning it's plugged into the wall, but recognizes when the power goes out and then has batteries in there and sends it to, to turn on. Well, that sounds really good, but there's two downfalls to that. One, that means I always have to have this hose and uh, yeah. air stone dangling in my tank, which nobody wants. Uh, <laughs> no. And two, that air stone actually needs to be maintenanced, mm -hmm. meaning that if it gets all clogged up with biofilm because it has been two years since you had a power outage, it may not work when you need it. So while these used to be one of the most popular options out there, because they do look like they're oh, yeah. aerating the water, it would be a third in the list of things I would do. All right, number 10, generators. Uh, this is the best option if you determine you want the biggest insurance policy on your tank. Go out and pick up one of these things. Uh, it will probably run your entire tank. So also a great option if you know that you have frequent prolonged mm -hmm. power outages. There are some downsides though to generators. Uh, one, if there's a big storm, you will never find one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone else will have already bought it before you. You'll be driving three states to get it. So you're gonna have to get it now. Uh, you could probably get one that runs the entire tank for as little as five to 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the essence of the tank, a really small one for probably 300 bucks. Uh, but the downside to one of these things is A, they need to actually work when you need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to maintain it. You can't leave uh, old gas in it and gum up the carburetor in Start it. Start it every year, two times a year. Change mm -hmm. the oil. Because uh, the reality is, is that you probably won't use it that often. It may not work when you need it. 
Yeah, this is another one of those things that you know, there's different options of generators. You can get the whole home generator. Uh, it'll start itself and you know, it'll give you metrics and you know, oil capacity, all this other really fancy stuff. Powers your whole entire home. The other end is you know, these propane or gas uh, generators that, again, you physically have to be there when the power goes out to fire them up and run them. There may be some smart options that might uh, be plugged into an outlet and recognize it. Most of the time, that's the whole home one. But again, you know, choose your investment and, and how much you have put in your tank to choose the right generator option. The ones that you talked about, the whole home ones, those run on natural gas, just uh, for reference, they will. They'll turn on the moment it, uh, the, the electricity goes out. You'll never even know it, man. That means that you can still watch TV and you can still have a reef tank at the same time. <laughs> you still have your furnace is still running. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your home's not whole, cold, it's not hot. There's a lot of different benefits that you might be able to get that past the household, but note that an inexpensive one of those, those whole home, automatic, runs on natural gas, often somewhere between five grand and 10 grand installed. So not the cheapest solution, but definitely that's the end game. I know there's two questions we didn't answer today, no. which is how do I make it safer and get rid of all those user errors that trigger the GFCI and everything else? That's right here. The second question we didn't answer is just how long does this battery, $120 battery backup last? See in my investigates right here.